Remember that in, 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 the, in the conversion course they told us that on the, on the, on the carrier, used to land like this. So um, part of the, of, the, of the speed was break into the, into the wheels. This is how it designed. This is how they designed the Air Force. So, okay, we'll try it. And we came on 23 degrees, pedal shaking, and, and, uh, and we just, just sink the, the airplane into the, into the runway. And it went, I think, uh, the, the wheel was hitting the, the, the wings, but nothing happened. And then I stood on the brakes, just stood on them, and we're just running into this. It's not a hole, it's a hill. Because when the bomb hit the runway, it, it, it bring up the, uh, the tar, and it becomes like a hill. So I'm running into a hill, and I stop about this, this, this far from that. My, my knees was shaking, and I was, so I took the lowest voice that I can and said, we can land. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we make 180, we go down, I, I come to the, to the uh, alert position, a total chaos, people running from here, and I'm waiting for the, for the guys to come and, and make the clear on the gun to, to save the gun, and nobody comes, and we are standing there, engine, working, nobody comes to us, and then I stand in the cockpit, I start to call someone to come to us, and then somebody came, they put the, uh, the clearing, and uh, we couldn't get into the shelter because there was a bomb exactly in front of the shelter, unexploded. This was the reason but everybody was in a chaos there. They didn't know what to do. They came to the bomb, they went out of the bomb, and, and, and all of the time, when I, I took off my helmet, I hear the sirens, and this is also something that confuse people because the sirens said, ooh, ooh, and that makes people really uh, uh, confused. They didn't know what to do. So we went out of the airplane, and uh, I decided that we have to take off again because they will come back again. So we're looking for the Bowser that have to fill out. There's no Bowser. Where is the driver? Nobody knows. There was Bowser standing there. Nobody knows how to. And in the meantime, I saw my wingman go to the other airplane and start taking the, the, the missile out of it and put it in his airplane because we shot all our missiles. And they landed with missiles, so they start quarreling about the missiles. And then I, talk, I called the other uh, leader and I told him, let's, let's split the missiles. It's all MID. So we asked the, uh, the technician to split the missile between us and them. So we had an, another two missiles. And we looked for the Bowser. We, we filled it. We took away, by the time the a bulldozer took away all the debris from the runway, they filled it with some sand, and we took off. And we actually uh, then patrolled about three hours, but nobody came. So that was the end of this, uh, of this mission of Yom Kippur. This was the first time. I claimed for five, I was credit for four. But That's okay. not bad. Whatever. <laughs> Uh, so the next, the next mission, shortly, I will tell it, because it has a, a point for the, for the raid, that uh, there was a night when, when the Egyptians crossed the canal, the Suez Canal, with, with the rafts. And, and the, the ground forces couldn't stop them, so they called the Air Force, but the area was fully uh, protected by SA-2, SA-3, SA-6, and it was night, that night. So they decided, we do a loft. And, and so they calculated the, the, the release range, and, and we start flying on the loft. But in order not to be uh, tracked by, by a SAM, like SAM-6 or SAM-3, you have to fly very low. But it was a dark night, and I was scared. I couldn't, I couldn't push the stick to go down. I maybe flew 1,000 feet, and it's a sitting duck for there. So we're pressing in, all of a sudden I see on the, RR, uh, on the RWR, I see this here, and it comes big, and it goes like this. And I know that they lock on me. So what can I do? I press on, another, another one mile to pull up. Okay, we get to the pull up, I pull up, and here, boom, the sky become like a flash. I only saw the cockpit, like somebody put a flash in the cockpit. I didn't see anything, just the cockpit, and I was somewhere here. The bomb released, and all of a sudden it come black. Because, uh, and, and then, I like, I fly it like using the force, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe made a loop, who knows. 
because at the end of that, I, I found myself very close to the ground, but flying. So we went home, so we, we pressed home. At that night, we lost six phantoms, six FOs in these missions. So I went home, I go down to the, to the squadron, I go to the uh, operation board, I see myself again. I said, are you, are you right? I'm going back again there? They said, yes, you, you have a lesson learned. You can go there again. So I had to fly another flight. And that time, it was a half a moon, and I pressed really low at night in order to evade this. And this time, I don't know why. They didn't look at me. I just released it and come back. So I remember, if you don't fly low, some, sometime later, you will have a punish. They punish you. So this is a Yom Kippur over there with a lot of others. Wonderful. So we're running short on time, but I did want to ask you what happened in 1982. 1982, it is episode five, Israel strikes back. Uh, there was, uh, we, we went into a, a fight in Syria over Lebanon because they deployed this, the same into Lebanon and they also, um, there was a problem with, so we went into there and uh, the plan was that we will knock up the, uh, knock out the, the air defense first and uh, we planned, I, I was planning this plan in 1979 when I was the headquarter and the, the idea was that the best EW is Mark 84. This is the best EW. And, and we, we, we made a plan of, of, of pop-ups, a lot of pop-ups on, on the SAMs, and we actually destroyed the whole air defense in three hours. We just knocked it out in three hours, and it was clean skies. And after that, we just came in. But the Syrians, when the air defense was, was, was destroyed, they just sent the whole mix there. And, uh, and, and uh, it was a multi-boogie area, and in two and a half days, we, we shot down uh, one third of the Syrian Air Force. In two and a half days, I shot myself six, and my squadron shot 23, uh, the other squadron 21, the F-15 squadron shot 35, so we totally shot 86 airplanes to zero, to nothing. And in, in two and a half days, So that was actually the, 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 the war of the Air Force, because, because what, is an, what is a war? A war is, a, is a, the two leaders communicating with each other. And, ex and instead of exchanging a whole lot of, of lead between them, when you come with the Air Force and you destroy air defense, and then you saw one third of the Air Force, he understood, and in, in, in 10 o'clock at Friday, he put up the, the, the white flag and he asked for, for a ceasefire. But Menachem <laughs> Begin said, we sto you stop the fire at 10 o'clock, we stop the fire at 12 o'clock. And we came there at, at 10 o'clock, I flew there, there was not a single airplane in the, in the sky. They, they keep up the, the ceasefire, and at 12 o'clock it was ended. Sir, Ms. Naomi, thank you for traveling here from Israel to be here with us. It's been fantastic for me, hopefully for you as well. Um, sir, is there anything else you would like to part, uh, to give the class before we depart? As a matter of fact, yes. I want to say two things uh, about leadership and air power. Leadership. Do you know what the difference between the man in charge and a leader? So I tell you my, my view about it. Man in charge may be a commander, he or she. He orders people what to do. And his authority comes from the organization, from his rank. He may himself may be a loser. She, normally not a loser, but she can be a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but they can order from the power of the organization. From another world, the manager in a corporate, he makes people do because he pays them. Again, the power of money. But a leader makes people want to do what he wants. 
And how he does that? It is not that he has to tell them. They guess what he wants before he even said it. And he's not using some Jedi mind trick. They know what he wants. Why? In my view, there's a lot of virtue for a leader, and you, and you teach them. I have one thing that I think is the most profound. Lead by example. And people will follow you. People will believe in your, in your true uh, motives. You believe that you are really, you go the first. You don't send people when you're on a unit. They will follow you. And they will do whatever you want without even you telling them. This is leader. And secondly is the air power that I want to speak about. And I can say about this that in August, 20th of August, 1940, Sir Winston Churchill gave one of his famous speeches, which in the end, he said the immortal sentence that never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. And, af and me, after being here for this week, seeing these giants, I don't belong to the giant, I'm a midget. They're, these are giants. Seeing them and hearing what you do there, I, can, I think that this sentence can be modified a little bit, that always, in the field of human conflict will so much will be owed by so many to so few. So this is your destiny. Thank you, sir.